Hey YouTube, you're watching Ready Set Drone, and today I have Philip Ulrich, who is here today to talk to us about something that has come up a number of times on my channel and some others. Uh, what is that topic? Flying at night, both Flying recreationally night. and commercially, but mostly recreationally, because that's the part that actually matters. Yeah, so, so there's some debate about whether you can fly at night, what's required of it, etc. And so we're going to just go through real quick. Um, I have to say Phil's done a lot of research uh, with uh, regard to the law, with regard to different organizations that are key players, stakeholders in this, the FAA, the AMA, etc. And so let's dive in and check it out. So before we dive in, uh, I just want to make sure everyone realizes we are not lawyers. We're not advising you. We're just uh, taking information that, as I said, Phil did a lot of research on and disseminating it in a way that is hopefully easy to understand. But ultimately, we are going to refer to some documents. And if you want all the details, we recommend that you go read the documents yourself and interpret them as you like. But um, again, Phil's been very thorough with his research, so I'm confident that you can trust what we're saying here is the best knowledge we could find as of today, this recording, which is in summer of 2018. Okay, so to start with, the uh, AMA is an organization that is going to be pivotal so, here, right? So that that's where things get hairy. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, debate about whether or not the AMA is a recognized nationwide community-based organization. Okay. And that's the first thing we have to talk about before we can even talk about their rules. Because if they are a uh, recognized community uh, nationwide organization, then they have the authority to make the rules. Is that correct? Yes, as long as they don't conflict with the FAA rules, um, which is okay. something we'll also see in the document and probably won't cover too much today. But Okay, so you've just stated that uh, in order to have the authority to make these rules, the organization can't contradict the FAA, mm -hmm. but the organization also has to be recognized as a nationwide community-based organization. Is That's that correct, right? yes. So if you Google that, it's a mess, right? What is a nationwide community-based organization? What does that actually mean? Yeah, uh, the, you won't even find good results on the first few pages. Um, if you do look through some of the forum posts um, that are in the first page, I believe one of them links to a guy whose name is Gregory McNeil. He tweeted out one time a screenshot of a document. Uh, and just to, just to be short, it basically says the FAA recognizes that we're not clear on what a nationwide community-based organization is, and we're going to comment on it. Um, and there's some commentary that was allowed from the public, and then they eventually um, came up with a, a commentary for the whole 336 document, actually. So essentially, they're commenting on everything that they think needs clarity in that document, and that's what part of what we'll be referencing today. So where did that uh, tweet actually originate from? So that actually originated from the Federal Register. Uh, and again, just for brevity's sake, uh, Federal Register is a, a government organization that puts out laws and regulations and uh, even commentaries on laws and regulations. And if the president signs a bill, that ends up in there as well. It's, uh, it's a newsletter that the government puts out every single business day. So there's lots of stuff in there. It's also not fun to read. So. If you ever need to look for anything in there, it's not easy to find, but uh, we did find this part of the, of the text that he screenshotted in there, um, and that's where it came from. So this tweet is from 2016. Uh, have there been any updates about it since then? So uh, I don't think the actual document has been updated from its uh, initial putting out and waiting for people to comment on it, just based on the data at the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they actually did anything with the comments they got from the people. But that document is actually available on the FAA's website under the Flying for Fun section. Okay, so what you're telling me is if you go to the Flying for Fun section, uh, this, this document, the, all this content is right there, but it's still confusing? Yeah, um, and I think this might be part of the FAA's fault, uh, but it's linked as like an afterthought in the bottom, along with another document that's also a mess. So um, if we look at the document that um, basically clarifies the rules on Section 336, on page 11 and 12 is what we actually care about. Okay. What does um, that say? So that says, Section 336A2 requires model aircraft be operated within a community-based set of safety guidelines and within that programming of a nationwide community-based organization. Congress explained that it intended nationwide community-based organization to mean, in part, a membership-based association that represents the aeromodeling community within the United States and provides its members a comprehensive set of safety guidelines that underscores safe aeromodeling operations within the nation, national airspace system 
and the protection and safety of the general public on the ground. Okay, so so that sounds like the AMA. I mean, kind of, but but is there anything more explicit? So this is, I don't feel comfortable commenting on this because I'm not a lawyer and this is ultimately up for, up for debate, I guess, on if the AMA meets this. But what is not up for debate is that they explicitly mention the AMA in a footnote of this document. Well, cool. So after all that, we need a drum roll. Um, what, what should uh, recreational flyers be doing to fly at night? Okay. Or so, not fly at night? So if you haven't actually looked at the AMA's rules, first of all, shame on you. Secondly, um, you probably should. So there is a book, or I wouldn't say a book, there's a PDF that I, they probably printed as a book before, uh, and it's their safety guidelines. On page eight um, of this book, there's actually a section that is underneath remote control, and it ta uh, talks about night flying. So the stipulations they put out for night flying are that you have lights that do two things. One, help you determine its elevation, and two, determine its orientation your lights should be able to indicate to you about how high it is. Like, they, they don't have to tell you, you know, I'm 300 feet in the air, but you should be able to see the lights and determine in relation to Oh, I see what you you're saying. Based on, based on a line of sight, uh, being able to look up and say, that's probably about 50 feet in the air. Yeah. Okay, okay. I see what you're saying. So, so if you're flying a drone, let's say you have a toy drone that doesn't even have an app and doesn't have an altimeter, uh, but it has uh, oriented lights, you know, different color front and back, and you're flying around a SEMA X5C, right? That, mm -hmm. that has different color lights, you know which way it's going, uh, and you know the size of the drone, and based on the fact that there's a tree in your backyard, and it's about twice as high as that tree, that tree's about 25 feet tall, you're about 50 feet in the air. Yeah. That, as long as you maintain sight with those lights, and they give you the ability to determine how high it is, roughly, and where what orientation it is, then that, that fits their requirements. Okay, awesome. So. Uh, so very much like day flight in terms of uh, the rule being line of sight, right? You need to be able to look up and see that drone and just keep an eye on where it is. Yep. All right, so we've established the rules for flying at night for um, recreational flying. What about uh, part 107 professional certified pilots? Do they follow the same rules or are they different? They are different and it's actually pretty cut and dry. Uh, if you've actually already taken your part 107 test, you're already familiar with it, I would hope. Um, so essentially there is one section of it and it's 107.29 that refers to daylight operations uh, and that basically reads like this. Um, no person may operate a small unmanned aircraft system during night and they if they do operate during night they have to have uh, anti-collision lighting with it, that's visible for at least three statute miles and um, as for purposes of night, night is determined by being 30 minutes after sunset and 30 minutes before sunrise. There is one section of uh, the, the night, uh, essentially, that you can fly, and that's between sunset and 30 minutes after, and between sunrise and 30 minutes before. Right, twilight. Yeah, it's uh, called or, the, the twilight hours, yeah, I believe. Yeah. Um, but you still have to have that same three mile light visible. Typically with aviation, that's a strobe light, and you can actually pick those up at most uh, drone stores for like 15 bucks or so. Yep. Battery powered, really small, just stick it on. Yeah, yeah. Loom cube would probably work too. Those yeah, that would are, work too. Those yeah. things are super bright. Okay, so uh, what about um, getting a waiver? Yes, so first of all, it's, uh, it's not a nighttime waiver, it's actually a daylight operation waiver, because you're oh. waiving the rule for daylight uh, operations. Okay, so it's so, kind of the opposite. Yeah, it's weird, uh, it throws a lot of people off. Uh, but yes, you can get a waiver, and waivers are a very fun system. Are you being sarcastic? <laughs> yes, very sarcastic. That's what I thought. Um, so if you have your Part 107 certification, you can register on the FAA's website, and then the, what do they call it, the FAA, Drone zone, yeah, is that what it yeah, is? Yeah. yeah. Underneath that website, there's a section where you can request waivers. And you can request waivers for almost anything in Part 107. The question is whether or not you will get it. Right, certain things are gonna be harder to get and you're gonna have a lot more justification. But night flying is not one of those things, right? Yeah, I would probably say it's one of the easiest ones to get. Uh, but that being said, it's also not easy to get because if you look at uh, drone forums where people have said they've tried to get it, a lot of people said that they failed. Right, right. And there's guides on the internet to help you with this, but if you follow those guides, they aren't necessarily going to get you there either. Right. It's a there's a human involved on the other end who's evaluating, looking to make sure that you're doing this uh, with all the right precautions. Um, and so ultimately, it's about just doing your homework and, and following the process. Yeah, you got to show them that you know everything that they want to know, you know. <laughs> right, right. 
So that's great. I think we've cleared up some misconceptions here, or at least uh, based on uh, what you said. It's pretty simple. For recreational flying, you just need to make sure that your drone has the proper lighting so that you can orient it in the air and also estimate altitude from the ground so you know how high off the ground you are. Correct. Uh, and for part 107, can you summarize that? Yeah, part 107, so you just have to have a light uh, visible for three uh, statute miles, and that is during the twilight period as well as the actual night. And if you want to fly during the night, you have to get a waiver. All right, so I'd really like to thank Phil for doing all this research. There's a lot of data here. Neither of us are lawyers, and we're not uh, telling you what to do. We're just trying to distill the information that's available and make it easy to digest so that more people can understand the rules. Yeah, and please share this with your friends, especially if they don't know the rules or if they're mistaken about the rules, because um, that will allow us to actually uh, know the rules, be able to share them with others, and knowing the rules is half the battle. Exercising the rules is the other half of the battle. If we don't actually use the, the allowances that are given to us, then we might lose them, so. Absolutely, absolutely, and use them safely. So, uh, thanks again to Phil. He does have a YouTube channel, which I'll link below. If you uh, liked this video and you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. We're gonna try to do more of these sort of in-depth videos about rules and regulations in the future. And of course, uh, comment and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.